this has just been really, really problematic for most small business owners. Hallie Sittig owns Classic Jewelry in Monticello, and her and her business are feeling the effects of the outbreak of coronavirus. When the governor mandated that we stay at home, we closed the store completely. So we have had no customers, no business, nothing since for two weeks now. The coronavirus pandemic isn't just affecting people physically, it's affecting their business too. Without a way to gain revenue through in-person business, business owners like Hallie are struggling to make revenue. You can't have zero cash flow and be able to pay your people. I still have to pay rent. I don't have money coming in for that. Nothing's changed. All of the bills I have are still there. I just don't have any money to pay them. Hallie explains that despite what the government says, not much is being done to help small businesses. The government has made all of these announcements that say that the Small Business Administration is offering like loans, emergency grants um, to be able to help small business owners. The only problem is that the emergency grant that they said was available within a couple of days of applying for it isn't actually coming through in two days. It'll be two weeks on Tuesday and that that money hasn't come through. No one is talking about the fact that, you know, small businesses are applying for this stuff and nothing is happening. Hallie Sitting is just one of the thousands of small business owners feeling the effect of the coronavirus. My name is Jennifer Knapp. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist and I own Rise Therapy and Rogers. The coronavirus outbreak has turned the healthcare industry virtually upside down. We've moved all of our clients onto um, telehealth. And so what that means is we had to work on creating a system that would be secure and easily accessible to clients uh, to get them the information that they needed to know how to log in and how to reach out to their therapist and to continue their sessions throughout all these changes. The pandemic has created a whirlwind of new challenges that business owners have to overcome. There's been quite a few challenges so far. The first part was just assessing to make sure that clients still had access to care. Um, that meant making sure that they had access to the internet, to cell phones or laptops or things like that so they could reach their providers. And then we had to create a whole system so they could be part of our secure online system, making sure that their privacy was still protected during this process. The other part that I think has been really quite challenging is it's the first time in history that, um, at least in my practicing history, that providers are going through the same experience as clients, right? So clients are talking about um, their own anxiety and worries about this pandemic and when it will end and how their families are being impacted while simultaneously we as providers are, are having our own worries and concerns. Small business owners like Hallie and Jennifer aren't alone in the challenges they're facing. Employees for larger companies are facing their own challenges too. Doug McCoy works at Knutson Construction as a project executive. Working from home, I would say just like myself, it's uh, been a challenge learning new technology, um, implementing new ways of doing business and uh, working through some of those challenges. Many employees like business owners are now working from home. However, all of our construction sites are still ongoing. Everybody is working in the field due to the governor's classification that construction is still considered essential. All of our project sites are up and running. Some Americans whose business has been deemed essential, however, are going to work like usual. I do go to work every day like normal. John Knapp works as a quality engineer at Metalcraft in Elk River, which helps manufacture medical parts for hospitals. We have been deemed essential because of the medical equipment that we help produce. For those Americans still going to work, the typical 9 to 5 is looking a bit different. The maintenance department now goes through the shop, wiping down all commonly touched surfaces, like doors, doorknobs, um, the lunchroom tables, etc. In addition to that, everybody has to be mindful of cleaning their own areas. We have implemented precautions for cleaning after every break and also now have implemented everyone on the project sites are required to wear masks um, to try to help minimize that, but we are still focusing on the six feet social distancing to the greatest extent possible. The coronavirus is also having a devastating effect on Americans' job security. As of April 16th, nearly 22 million Americans have filed for unemployment, and that number only seems to be growing. In these dark times, where many Americans are jobless, we must stay present and support one another. One of the most important things is to, to sort of bring back our, our thinking into the present moment instead of the future-oriented what if and the how. It's more about staying present, staying connected, reaching out and supporting one another and talking to one another 
not sitting in that isolation and really, really sort of not letting your brain control the fear of what's next. The only thing Americans can do is hope for the best and persevere through these hard times. This has been Elizabeth McCoy and Zachary Knapp, Noise News.